But uh, this next adventure, I've got to say, is not for the faint-hearted. Picture this. Two blokes, two bicycles across three continents. Andy and his mate Dominic, they hail from Austria, and they've push-biked all the way to remote South Australia. Andy Buchanan joins us now. Andy, hi. Hi, hello. This sounds incredible. Where, where, where did this dream come from? Where did this idea come from? That's a good question. <laughs> I can't really remember. It's just I sat in my student dorms like three years ago in Austria. It was one late evening, you know, doing assignments, whatever. And then I just thought, yeah, is that everything to life, you know, starting working, whatever. And so I thought, yeah, maybe let's just take a year off do something that probably no one has ever done before. And yeah, quickly the idea started to came about riding the bicycle from Austria to Australia. And here we are now. So where did we you... arrived in Australia. You've just... How long ago did you arrive in, in Australia? Uh, like four weeks ago, nearly. Four weeks ago, we arrived in Perth. So now we're riding the bike from Perth to Brisbane, like all across the continent. And... Then our adventure, Austria to Australia, is finally over. I have to say finally. So when did you leave? <laughs> uh, we left all the way back in April 2017, so nine months ago, um, in Austria. Back then it was like winter in, Aust- in Austria. We had snow in Ukraine short- shortly afterwards. So we really, we really encountered all the seasons on our trip so far. How did you, like, what, tell us about your route. Where did you go? Well, our route was um, half Europe, actually. So from Austria, we went east to Slovakia, Hungary, Romania. From there, we went up through Ukraine. There we crossed the mountains where a snowstorm hit us. Then we, wa- we went still further up north to Poland, Lithuania, Latvia. From there, we crossed the... Uh, our first real border um, to Russia. So then we visited Moscow, which was our most northern point. And from there, we just went southeast through Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, China, Pakistan, India, Nepal, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. So this was like eight months. And from Singapore, we flew to Perth. And now here we are, uh, 150 kilometers away from Port Augusta. And how many plane trips uh, were in there on top of cycling? Uh, excuse me? Were there How many plane trips were in there on top of the, the cycling? Oh, no trips at all. We just cycled. Just cycled? Yeah, just cycled. So mm. This may seem dull for, for one or the other, but that's our way of, of doing this. Just cycle and boat? And... Sorry, didn't hear it. Well, how did you get to Australia? Oh, yeah, uh, we flew to Australia, obviously. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It would have taken too much to take the of ship. Course. Yeah, yeah. So. No, that's what I was wondering. Like, how, how, how many plane trips have been in there as well? Oh, uh, it's just one. It's actually two plane trips because we didn't get the Myanmar visa. We were in Nepal, in Kathmandu. We applied for the Myanmar visa, but we didn't get it because there is some humanitarian crisis there. Apparently, so we had to skip Myanmar. We had to fly from Nepal to Thailand. It okay. was never planned. It was we were pretty disappointed, like really devastated. Yeah, but, that's from the yeah. earthquake last year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, um, oh, this is an incredible story, Andy. What, what <laughs> do you, what do you think of Australia so far? You've only been here a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, we've been here a couple of weeks. So Australia is great. It's not as hot. As we expected. Um, on the other hand, it's colder than we expected. So our coldest night in Australia was six degrees. We woke up to six degrees. And the thing is, we don't have any sleeping bags anymore because we sent them home in Malaysia. Because, yeah, everybody told us Australian summer, it would be so hot. And we thought, okay, so let's send our winter sleeping bags home. So we really froze up our assets in the first few nights in Australia because we sleep in tents. We have to add. So yeah, afterwards we bought some blankets and now it's fine. When are you but, gonna when are you gonna do the Nullarbor? Oh we already crossed the Nullarbor. Oh you're right, of course. Yeah like 
three days ago. Yeah, how was that? The Nalapo was, to be frank, the the hardest part, the hardest leg of our trip. Like the thing is, after having crossed Pakistan and India and all these, you know, countries, we thought, yeah, Australia will arrive there. It's a first world country. It will be so easy, just a relaxing finish to our adventure. But no way. Australia is actually maybe the the most difficult leg of a trip, and especially the Nullarbor. Because it's like, so long and straight? And... Yeah, well, yeah, that too. But on a strip of 1,200 kilometers, there's absolutely nothing, right? Uh-huh. So on the beginning of the Nullarbor, we we bought like 50 cans per person of baked beans, of corn, of tuna, and we had, we carried like, like 25 liters of water per person. So our bikes, they were way overloaded with like 85 kilograms each. And yeah, it was just, it was very difficult, but we did it. It was fine. We're proud of us. And yeah, you should be. Everybody's happy, yeah. Andy, was yeah. it harder riding the Nullarbor than it was riding in a snowstorm in the Ukraine? Let me think for a second. Um, yeah, it was. <laughs> the Nullarbor was harder, for sure, and I can tell you why. Because in Ukraine, in the snowstorm, well, you can get water, right? You just melt the snow if if there's no other way. But how do you get water on the Nullarbor? It's, it's a desert, right? Mm-hmm. So we just we just refilled our our water supplies at the public restrooms in the roadhouses. Like we didn't ask, we just did it, you know. So nobody complains. So you're in, re- you, so yeah. yeah, you're in remote South Australia now. Uh, exactly, yeah. You've just crossed the Nullarbor. So it was exactly. Perth, crossed the Nullarbor, remote South Australia, and you're working your way to... To Port Augusta. To like po- tomorrow evening we'll arrive there. Mm-hmm. And tell us about your bike. Our bikes, they're just actually nothing special. I mean, yeah, they are special in that Mm, they have some more racks than a usual bike, so where you can just hang up your panniers. But other than that, they have two wheels, they have a saddle, a handlebar, so just a normal bicycle. But it's German-made, so yeah, it's tough. <laughs> it's, they are more tanks than they are bikes. <laughs> I should mention that. You're cycling that tank. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. What do you so? Where's that? Like, what are you looking forward to about finishing? You said before that you kind of it's you you're close now. You are nearly finished. Yeah. What are you going to do when this is all over? Um, well, fall in a deep depression, I guess. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, we look forward to seeing like a family again, our friends, we having s- real meals again because. It's been quite a while. Will you stick around in Australia for long or will you head back to Austria? No, we can't really stick for long because we have just a three months visa, so we will use more, um, most of that for the bike trip, right? So it will take us roughly two and a half months to cross Australia and then we'll have just two weeks left. So we can't really stick um, for long after we finish it. Sure. But but on the other hand, in these two and a half months, we, we will have seen like more of Australia than the average Australian bloke, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's no doubt that you guys are, are doing it in, a, it in a unique way. How's Dominic? Yeah. Dominic's good. Dominic's good. He's standing next to me. Um, yeah. Any, uh, are you sore? Hmm? Are you sore? Got any? Oh. Yeah, like you got blisters or oh. thigh muscles. Yeah, yeah, all the all the time. Dominic had some serious knee injury back in China, so that was four months ago. So the doctor then, the Chinese doctor, told us that yeah, we can't continue. You know, he has to rest for one to two years. There are no um, sport activities allowed. So yeah. But he kept going. Yeah, I mean, that was a shocker. But then he, the doctor, yeah, 
Gave him some herbs or something. Uh, Andy Buchmann joins us. Uh, he and his mate Dominic, uh, they're from Austria. Uh, two blokes, two bicycles. They've crossed three continents. Uh, basically, they left in April 2017 and they've gone from Austria to Australia. They arrived in Perth. Uh, they just did the Nullarbor. Now they're in remote South Australia. Hey, um, the highlight for you so far, and then we'll let you get back on the road. The best bit of your trip so far, what has it been, Andy? Um, it was actually all the way back in Kazakhstan. So after like two and a half months, we just crossed the Russian-Kazakh uh, border. And obviously, like we had no local money, no Kazakh money. We had no food left. We had no water left from Russia. So we just stumbled actually into Kazakhstan. And yeah, we wanted to buy food, water, whatever, daily supplies that we need. Um, but we couldn't, like, right, we couldn't. So then a Kazakh family invited us to their homes just from the street. Like, we didn't look trustworthy at all, just dirty, stinky guys. I was bald back then. We just didn't look good, but they just invited us and gave us food, water. We could take a shower. Um, we stayed there for one night. So, yeah, that was actually still, it still is the best part of, of the whole trip. Well, and at Pakistan was awesome because of the hospitality of the people. It is really so, good to hear, Andy. Incredible. Yeah, yeah pa- Pakistan. Yeah, Pakistan. You would expect it, you know, to be a mm. terror state and whatever, rude people, but not at all. Yeah. Like yeah. They were the loveliest people of, of all. The Pakistanis, the loveliest yeah. of all. Oh, man. That is incredible. You have no idea. Yeah. Really.